Back at 841 tonight, filmmaker Ken Burns brings his legendary insight on American history to the story of Jackie Robinson, who, of course, broke baseball's color barrier. Take a look. Jackie Robinson laid the foundation for America to see its black citizens as subjects and not just objects. It, 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 it meant that there were six and seven and eight year old boys who suddenly thought a black man was a hero. Ken Burns, good morning, sir. Hey, good to see you. You've really. assembled some pretty good voices in this yeah. in this film. <laughs> it's a, that's not a bad get. You know, I was struck about how active Jackie Robinson was in civil rights before he broke the color barrier. Yeah. In April of, of 1947, you had Martin Luther King saying Jackie Robinson was a freedom rider before there were freedom riders. Just just think about when he comes up. Uh, Martin Luther King is in college. Uh, Harry S. Truman hasn't integrated the military. There's no Brown versus Board of Education. There are no organized sit-ins, except Jackie as a teenager is refusing to get up until he's served at a Woolworth lunch counter. Uh, Rosa Parks is a decade away from refusing to give up her seat, but he's done it back in 44 and gotten court-martialed for it at Fort Hood. So he is at the vanguard of the modern civil rights era as we do. And we sort of think of him as just uh, the person who turns the other cheek for three right. years, when in fact he is this fiery, uh, competitive guy who will not accept second-class citizenship and fights his whole life before baseball as a kid, in baseball and then out of baseball as a civil rights leader until his death way too early in 70. It's, it's funny you say that because as I was watching this, I was struck by how little I actually knew about Jackie Robinson. Well, we the, assume we know everything yes. about him. He's almost painted one dimensionally this, by history. This is exactly what happens. And Sarah Burns and David McMahon, my co-directors and co-producers, and I really felt that, you know, he had become a mythological figure and therefore that superficial thing that we have uh, for him. And then all of a sudden, uh, we can remove that. We can liberate him from the tyranny of that mythology and tell you about the much more complicated person, good and bad, but also the much more interesting and I think at the end of the day much more heroic. You know, this is also a beautiful love story. Yes. This is a story about Rachel and Jackie, a man who loves his country, but a man who can't do it without the extraordinary woman he has by his side. Did you think, Ken, that he fully grasped at the time in April of 47 what he was stepping onto that field to do? I mean, he knew it was historic, obviously, but do you think he understood what he was in for, the good and the bad and the ugly? I don't think you could fully appreciate, anybody could predict the kind of just horrible abuse that he would face, but I think Branch Rickey understood that of the people that he was thinking of breaking up, the African Americans, Jackie alone was the one who could do it, who could turn the other cheek only because he was so fiery in his understanding of what his role would be in history, that he knew that if he could do this, he was opening a door for a whole bunch of people, including the President of the United States, and when we spoke to the President and First Lady, they were very clear that they held Jackie as one of those pioneers that permitted them to move into the spaces mm. they've moved in. And while they're two different couples in two different times, they are uh, representing the same aspirations, that one day we might finally live out the full meaning of our creed, as Dr. King said, mm. that we judge people based on the content of their character and not on the color of their skin. Did it become at any point a burden for him? this badge that he wore the rest of his life. He retires from baseball in 1956, still has a lot of life to live yeah. ahead of him. Was it ever tough for him? I don't think so. I, I think this is an existential story. I mean, all of us in the media business, we do a good job of talking the talk. Jackie Robinson walked the walk. Mm -hmm. He got up every single day and he said, I am going to make the world better for other people. And he did it. And I think he understood that there were going to be inevitable vicissitudes. There was going to be trouble and abuse and problems, but he never steered from that course and that's what makes him when you remove the sanitized Madison Avenue view of him it makes him that much more heroic and you know he can help us understand today as we grapple with complex politics he was there at the 64 convention when the Republicans switched from the party of Lincoln to something else mm -hmm. and he watched that change he was a Republican and he supported Richard Nixon at least initially in 1960 and then he was back in San Francisco in 64 supporting the liberal Nelson Rockefeller so it's a it's a great story of America too it is and you tell it so well, and again, I was amazed by how little I knew, thinking I knew the whole Jackie Robinson story, as only Ken Burns can do it. And by the way, you mentioned your daughter yes. and your son-in-law, co-directors yes. on the film. Yeah, and they, and they, Sarah Burns and David McMahon, wrote the script, so I'm now the guy who they say, no, Dad. You know, no, 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 we're going to do it the real way. No mythology anymore. You know? It is absolutely fantastic. Thank should you. come as no surprise, given that you did it. Part one of Jackie Robinson premieres tonight on PBS. 
part two airs tomorrow night. Ken, great to see you, sir. Great to see you. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.